Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about explanatory power of the model. The explanatory power actually is the term that I come up with. It's not a new concept, but it's a very interesting concept that we usually use in predictive modeling. So basically when we build a prediction model to predict the target variable from input variables, we want to know how well our model explains the target variables based on the input variables. So in this case, I, I use the same concept, but I apply it to the structure equation modeling. Simply put, explanatory power, or EP, refers to the ability of a full structure model to explain the variability observed in the data. It measures how well the model captures the underlying relationships between exogenous variables and a specific endogenous variable. So the, that specific endogenous variable that we're talking about is a construct that we plan to predict or we plan to explain how it is affected or influenced by other input variables or independent variables or in the full structure equation modeling concept we call exogenous variables. For example, an EP of 80% means the model can explain 80% of the variance in the specific endogenous variable based on the variance in the exogenous variable. Now let's look at the example model that we have. Uh, this is the full structural model that we tested before with the new relationship between three constructs. And as you can see, we have two endogenous variables or two dependent variables, so to speak. Uh, the first one is personal accomplishment, which you know, influenced by two other variables, the emotional exhaustions and the depersonalization, or F2. The second endogenous variable that you can see is the depersonalizations, which is influenced by the F1, which is emotional exhaustions. So now, for example, if the variable of interest is personal accomplishment, we want to see how well this model explains F3. So let's see how we can do that uh, using AMOS. And the idea is we use the score similar to R square. If you remember in multiple regression, R square measures the variance, variance explains, right? the total variance explains of the dependent variables based on the independent variables. So in here we are using very similar measures to evaluate the explanatory power of our model for this specific F3, which is personal accomplishment. So how can we calculate this measure in AMOS? There is an option in analysis property that we need to check. Uh, it is a very simple process. We open the analysis properties and you go to the output tab and you can see that there is an option, say, square correlations. You just need to check it. Once you check the box square multiple correlation, a must will produce us with a similar R square value. So let's run this model and see where we can find it. And this is the output model after we run the model with this edit feature, right? And uh, we got the same estimated uh, value as before because it's exactly the same models. So now in order to find the square correlation value that we need to uh, use to evaluate the explanatory power, we go to the output and click on the estimate. So we see all other outputs. See so before if you scroll down, we can see on the bottom, we have square multiple correlation, right? So how do we interpret this output? For example, if we are uh, going to evaluate the explanatory power for F3, which is personal accomplishment, we can see that the square correlation in this case 0.84. In other words, our model can explain 18.4% of the variance in this 
practically viable, which is personal accomplishments, based on the variance in the other two dependent variables or exogenous variables, which is depersonalization and personal exhaustions. Now, 18.4% is not a very high value. Typically, there's no clear cutoff value, but typically, you know, if you have multiple independent variables, we would expect, you know, about 50%, 70% is the best, but 50% is okay, considered acceptable, given the number of independent variables. Basically, the more independent variables you have, the explanatory power tends to decrease. Now, if we look at uh, another uh, endogenous variable, F2, for example, in this case, you can see that the our model's explanatory power for F2, which this this personalization, is 30.7%, which is higher than for F3. Uh, but remember, F2 has only one independent variable, which is F1, you know, uh, compared to F3, which has two independent variables. So typically, we can see why uh, the model can explain F2 better, because it's it is estimated based on only one independent variable. Uh, basically, in this case, you can conclude that uh, our model doesn't have very good explanatory power. Uh, how to fix that? Uh, you know, that's that. You know, the common strategy is to increase the sample size. Particularly with the limited sample size, explanatory power tends to be quite low. Also, we have to consider the number. Uh, independent variables or exogenous variables in the model as well. Uh, but basically, that is how we can create and evaluate the model's explanatory power in, structure, in structural equation modeling. The final word in this case is that in some studies, you do not always see this EP value because it depends on the purpose of study, uh, the authors, do not always need to evaluate the explanatory power of the model unless they want to evaluate how the model can explain a certain variable. So a lot of times they focus on uh, testing the relationships rather uh, than the overall model's explanatory power, but it is very important, also very interesting measures that we could use to further evaluate, you know, the uh, fidelity of our model, especially when you specifically want your model, want to use your model to predict a certain construct. So uh, use it as it's fit to the purpose of study. And in this video, you know, you can see that it's very easy to use AMOS to calculate explainer power. I explain this concept much deeper in the data mining perspective because it is very important measures for predictive modeling when we're looking at building a good model to predict a target variable. I hope you find the video useful. Uh, as usual, please like and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Thank you and bye now.